Fantastic work, Leon. <laughs> that really changes the whole definition of how this score could be approached. Um, there are a lot of superb touches to it. In this kind of scoring, I would give you a total pass for dropping the piano slurring onto wind and string parts. Because, you know, here you just really want that sense of incredible smoothness throughout. There's a, there are so many intriguing things to this score. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, like here, you the like, I would almost... I think one little one little thing that I'll, I'll I will mention like is here you're leaving off the um, the slurring and you have repeated notes and here you're slurring and you have repeated notes and here you're slurring over over the repeated notes. I think you need a unified approach for that and I I think that this one is the best, uh, just the clearest, right? But in any case, um, it wouldn't hurt to just mark like like molto legato right you know just like t just for everybody to be playing in a in a legato sense i mean it's like really obvious from the scoring that that's what you want but i would just just you know make absolutely sure so yeah i'll say piano possible uh i think that that right in here you could probably just mark triple p i think you'd pretty much get the same kind of a sound right um i don't i don't think there's a need to and probably still toss to in every part, but but you know, I mean, this works too. You know, just have a that, that helps the copyist prepare the parts, and the score reader and the conductor should understand it, and so on. I mean, it's a nice it's a nice little change, although it's not really all that standard, but it's still cool. I, I think it's very neat. So like, and then like scraping the tam tam. That's what this means for people who don't know. And you know, here like I usually um, I comment against. <clears throat> comment against having too many unnecessary um, uh, LV ties, but you know, I mean, I think I think here with the tam tam part, it's cool. I think with the timpani, it's completely unnecessary. Just mark how long you want it to last, and then as far as uh, vibraphone and so on and so forth. I think you can also tell us the duration. Just tell us the duration, you know, tell the player the duration. Same thing with the harp, you know. I mean, I, I really, you know, I see what you're going for in terms of the orchestration and, and this kind of, these kinds of incomplete ties and so on. I mean, they, they are a part of the character of that. So you get a bit of a pass in my book for that. So it's not a, I, it's nothing that I would really lose any sleep over or worry about or have any problem you know, thinking that that was an issue because it's not right. But yeah, it's probably not all that un not all that necessary. Right. I really love that you're indicating soft beaters and the vibes here. You got bowed vibraphone here, and these little touches from the harp. Really, really cool. Right. Right, and then this little surge when the melody comes in and. Horns plus oboes is such a beautiful combination. Uh, you know, one that isn't used as much as it could be, right? I mean, you see horn and oboe working together in Rite of Spring, and that's one of the things that gives it such a beautiful character. And while this doesn't sound anything like the Rite of Spring, I, I do think that there's a, a, an element of that quality in this. It's really nice. Yeah, and then, you know, then, then here we've got this... <clears throat> this um, growl here on the trombone. It's like something that doesn't really translate um, very well to a uh, note performer or whatever sound set you're using. Yeah, and then just a little touch of pianissimo here. Yeah, okay, and then going on, bassoon joining in, um, filling in that voice right in here. Yeah, and just little touches of flute. So th this is really cool. The <laughs> the way that the piccolo is working together with that, you know, these little jolting um, rinforzando tenudos. I think you left out a rinforzando here, my friend. Okay, and then the portato dragging 
violas right in here. Oh, it's just all these wonderful touches. Um, yeah, yeah, I really like it. It's like not like I have anything intensely critical or 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 you know or or worried. There's there's nothing worried about what I have to say about this. I think you've left out some slurs here and there. Um, this is very strange. You have a slur on top of a slur. I, I would have thought that this would have raised an eyeball, unless this is some scoring convention that I don't know about. But uh, you know, in in this kind of textural music, uh, but I would say you know choose. I think that you. I think you would just intended to go from here to here, but like you overshot the mark or something. Or you could just have the have the horn player the. The, your first horn player cover the entire top part, right? Okay, so yeah, um, yeah, and then is this slurred, right? So I think I think you needed to do a little bit of proofreading on your slurs. Yeah, yeah, this is, it's just really nice, really nicely done. I think you could turn this into a quarter note and it wouldn't bother anybody at all. Right, because then you have quarter note. Because, I mean, what, what time signature are we in? 6-4, right? So so this is actually kind of a um, a peculiarity, right? So it should really be 8th quarter, 8th quarter, right? But just neat. I mean, and, it, like, and like everything pretty much works. I, I don't see all that much out of balance here. The horn player is going to probably play down a little bit, right? But I mean, this is this is in essence. I mean, it is scoring of the quality of which, like the horn, does not really need to be toned down all that much, or the trombones either, because there's so much space, and the dynamic is so soft, and it's all so balanced, and there's you know there's so much care being put into it. Yeah, at the most you might say is like, well, these these trombones are going to interfere with the clarity of the portato here in the violas, right? Right. So, so if you, if you were if you open that can of worms and and drop down the horns a little bit, then you might end up dropping the excuse me, drop the trombone down a little bit. You might end up dropping the horn, horns down and so on and so forth, and it can just lead to too much tweaking. So I would say don't mess with it. However. I would probably want something doubling this, right? If you like, if you had a, a spare marimba player or something like that, if there was some way of, of like doubling that pulse, because it's it is getting buried by some of the other textures in here. I mean, it's very cool. Just so much attention to detail. I really enjoying it. Now, this is probably not going to be a very long evaluation because you know there isn't a whole lot that I can say about. Fixing things, I can I can sort of mention some some features of it that work in a very cool way, you know. Um, and there there are one or two little things, there are one or two little suggestions that I'm going to have coming up. But you know, just sharing it with everybody is you know is probably enough. Um, it's such great work from Leon here. I'm really enjoying it. All right, um, brightening up my day. All right, and then I just love this, like the harp just going pluck pluck pluck. Look, and just, just how long do you want the note to be? Just write that in. You don't need an un, an incomplete. Right? If you want it to last the whole bar, then just you know, and then it'll die away on its own. See, so see, the thing about this is like adding incomplete ties to a harp part is almost just like saying, you know, it's 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 a it's like a. Um, like a tautology, right? It's like something that like is saying the same thing again, then it doesn't require to be said because the harp is that kind of instrument. It's a sustained instrument, right? The harpist actually, you have to put in the coda sign or like you know the zodiac killer sign or whatever, the circle with the cross through it, um, to like stop the to stop the resonance, right? So so the assumption is that the harp pitches will just kind of continue and then the harpist makes the aesthetic decision to sort of stop the pitch, right? So here you're saying, well, you don't need to do that. Well, just write in how long you think it would last, right? Like the whole bar or something. Okay, but this is really cool. Molto cantabile violas, right? So the violas are really get a chance to shine here. 
And I, I would say like piano legatissimo here and just really make this as smooth as possible. There's some kind of strange approach to slurring in here. And like here you go a little further. So I think this is a mistake, right? And the same thing here, right? And then the same thing here, right? So, so pick a pick an approach and stick to it. All right, all right. Just don't like just either put one long slur over it, but don't have connecting slurs like this. That just means that it's what going to be one slur, right? Um, yeah. And then this sort of like you know push upwards and then like the flurrying downwards and so on. Yeah, this is possibly a place that could use a little bit of work. I don't think you need to go up to fortissimo here because I think that there's a chance of just blasting everybody else out the door. And you're not telling us what's the destination of everybody else in the brass section and the wind section and everything else, right? So here you're going crescendo to pianissimo. What does that mean? So are you going crescendo and then suddenly subito pianissimo? I think that you need destination dynamics at the ends of these bars, right? I think that that, and then like here, like we don't have a, we don't have any dynamic at all. So I don't know what is the, what is the entrance of the timpani? Probably they'll be listening to everybody else play and then they'll, they'll just imitate everything else that's going on and they'll go up to fortissimo if you're not careful, right? And the same thing might happen with the tuba and so it's so like here's a situation where we have like um we have kind of what you what open and closed hairpins right so i would say since we have this big flurry in the middle that's really pushing loudly i think it would be good to define the limits of the middle of this hairpin because otherwise the players may assume that you also want to go up to that same fortissimo. The conductor may assume it, right? If I were a conductor, I wouldn't be assuming it, but I would be, this would be pencil work. I would just basically guess what you wanted. Or if you were sitting there next to me and I was conducting, I would say like, how loud do you want things to go just before the end of B for everybody with the crescendo there? And you would have to say, well, mezzo forte, right? And then I wouldn't say anything, but you would probably be thinking to yourself, well, he's probably thinking, why didn't I write in mezzo forte there at the ends of the bars, right? So I think that you really do need to define it, right? And then there's, you know, this with this type of scoring, right, there's a, it's very hazy and, and um, you know, and cloudy and, you know, it's very, um, I mean, it's not impressionistic. It is more like modern textural, but there's an impressionistic quality to it, right? But you still have to define your terms very carefully, I think. That's my feeling. And then like with that clarity, then you get the lucidity, right? You get the very, like that everybody is on the same page in far, as far as what they want to do. And you don't get one player sticking out too far, right? You don't get like a massive push here from your tuba player or you don't get like trombones that just like you know that the the resonance of the trombone even after they stop the pitch is so loud that the that the reverb in the hall kills the entrance of these beautiful subtle instruments here All right okay yeah so i think that this was intended to be up here so you you're going to cover so, I mean, is that, does that work? Timpanists help me out here. This roll and then, yeah, I, I might like maybe like put a, like just putting a hand down on the, like next to the, to the final stroke maybe. But I mean, then you've got a roll rolling into it, right? So yeah, so I'm not so sure. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're having the vibraphone player sort of step over and I, I get it and then sort of, stop the sound of the timpani. I would respectfully say, like with this soft tam-tam stroke here, and then the pianissimo entrance here, I think that it might just end up being lost on the on the listener anyway, right? And, and sort of tie up the vibraphone player when they actually have to be worrying about this. So I think you could just, just roll down to down to a softer dynamic and and like the player could actually like just kind of like I don't know 
the um, one they could have like a kind of a, a stroke where like one one of the um, one of the the timpani mallets is is kind of deadening the head while the other one strikes it right I think that that might work better if you really are going for that effect all right so yeah so this tremolo right in here kind of adding the little harp thingies and the vibes and I mean I think this is this all works really really beautifully right in here it's a it, it is a great way of kind of bringing the like you've had this surge of energy and you've had this um, this kind of sense of regularity and flow underneath if what sounds like a uh, <laughs> sounds like a laxative commercial sorry um, you've had this sense of pulse continuing on, right? And I really love the twos against the threes. I think that that works great. And I think the trombones can play soft portato just like nobody else. You know, against the cellos and the bassoons, I think that that works beautifully. And I love that you're trading off the bassoons, right? So a lot of this works. All right, so then, you know, following that by a kind of more nebulous, it's like just, you know, going from one discrete texture to another even more stripped down texture that's wonderful all right and you know it's 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 at the point where almost like the fabric is starting to come apart a little bit and I, you know i just love that you bring in like once again i think i think triple p is would work fine here right and then you go diminuendo to niente right so I think that that'll, that would all work because like you're already like the player is going to say, what, you want me to be even softer than as soft as I can play? All right. So I think I think triple P works better here. OK, and then you've got the you've got the this oboe kind of coming in here and and yeah, just the, the beautiful reinterpretation of the material in here. That's wonderful. Broad vibraphone and so on. And then like here you have the harps like right okay so so what you need here is uh, instead of bisbigliando just on a f sharp right which so i think you should alternate between f sharp and g flat right just blah, 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 blah. so it's the same pitch but just in harmonic like have that in harmonic trill and of course i think you should mark it right so it's it's definitely it's not going to be any louder than like piano or or pianissimo anyways right but i mean yeah i think you could have add, added some nuances in here and, and more than just the same thing with the clarinet part more than just like a little crescendo here and a little diminuendo at the end you're saying rubato espressivo so what does that mean what expression do you want you can tell the player and then we're starting to get into some very cool artificial harmonics here well i mean those are those are natural harmonics but uh stopped at the uh stopped at the note at the fourth right so that all works well it's beautiful and then just like this this wonderful moment here where the clarinet comes in and and takes us to section c right all right so and so here you're going so still ponticello we had still tosto before and now we're going to ordinario um and yeah so I'm kind of wondering whether or not this G could have been played also as a, um, you know, also on the G string. So you could have gone back and forth, like the player could have just touched the two nodes. Um, yeah, no, see, that wouldn't work. Yeah. No, I mean, it's fine the way it is. Ignore my hypotheses. I'm sort of... I'm, I'm thinking of two different instruments at the same time. So yeah, I mean, yeah, that'll all work. Yeah. All right, and, and once again, you've got fours against threes, or, or twos against threes, fours against sixes. Yeah. And so we've got that, you know, we're coming back to home base here. Flutes and thirds, trombones and thirds, very softly underneath them, and you know, there's just sort of the rising tuba and so on. Yeah, I think that that works fine. You don't have to tell us a bow. Right. I mean, I see what you're trying to do here, like with the, the overlapping slurring, but I don't think, I think that in the end it just works. It One will work against the other. 
right? I, I don't think you'll get the, the effect that you were intending. Yeah, but I, I do really love the the effect that you're going for here with the um, with the 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 calm exterior and then the you know the kind of uh, simmering underneath kind of idea. So it is exactly you know that is the right vibe, even though it's orchestrated in in such a unique way. And then just kind of more of the same right in here, adding the oboe. This is this is really beautiful. It really, I mean, you you like you'll set up a certain way of doing things, and then you'll then you'll improve upon it or add new elements and so on, so that it changes the context enough to be something different, and then everything comes to a stop, etc. <laughs> How dare you, Leon? <laughs> just leave me hanging like that. Yeah. Um, there's just some beautiful textural choices here and and it's it's a lovely score and it's just really great to see you again with with such a unique idea and you know adding so much variety to the way that everybody is scoring things uh, certainly i have not yet seen a score that has taken the approaches that you have taken in this score right and i can't say that of every entry not that it's wrong if people two people have the same idea or or 12 people have the same idea about how to score the opening say but it just you know it's just interesting to see something that is so out of left field and so unique on so many different levels so you sh you could feel really happy about that i love this um minor third this sort of touch um uh, touch minor third uh, natural harmonic here. I, I think that I would probably score like an alternate approach to that note for those bassists who do not have a low C. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, just really good work. Well done. Very. Uh, very original it's original or it isn't right so it's original so um yeah i just i'm very impressed by this leon and uh and so thank you so much for <laughs> for you know crafting this like it's, it's it's not just that you had such a, an imaginative idea but you also backed that up with a lot of craft and and you know most mostly i would say almost almost entirely you made decisions that made this ready for the stands so even the stuff that i mentioned before like you know like this for instance um like not telling us the destination uh, those those things could be worked out in rehearsal maybe they will work fine in rehearsal without anybody saying anything right and it'll work right the first time and so all the players will say okay that's what we're going to do What's the problem <laughs> is when somebody didn't show up for rehearsal uh, and then like they come in and like that, you know, it's it's always that, you know, that other trombone player or, or what or whoever, right, uh, who will just like suddenly play really loudly into it or 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 too soft or something because like they didn't really get the context from everybody else. I had a situation like this where um I had a premiere of a fairly important piece, and um, since it was a like a sort of a volunteer orchestra, uh, the like I couldn't count on everybody being there, and indeed, like the like our dress rehearsal had no horns in it, and I was just I was just panicking because so much depended on the horns. But then everything went f great at the at the performance; like they really knew their stuff, so uh, I got really lucky. Anyway, um, so so I will just sign off now on this evaluation and uh, and thank you again, Leon, for sharing this with us and for putting in the work that you did and coming up with such uh, such different ideas, such delicately uh, textural ideas. I, I'm fascinated by this kind of scoring. Um, I rarely get a chance to do it myself, though. Um, though, like when I do uh, attempt it. I put in everything I, everything that I can, which um, people who have heard my my harp concerto will can, will attest to. 
So, uh, so thank you that for that. Thank you for supporting on Patreon. Thanks to all the Patreon supporters and the website subscribers and everybody participating in this, even if your participation is just watching these evaluation videos and making your own comments. And speaking of which, I know that everybody has a lot to say about this, so I'm not even going to bother <laughs> mentioning that you should... Uh, that you should comment below, which that's a kind of a strange way of mentioning it without with well, claiming not to mention it. So um, this has got me real excited, and um, I'm going to take that excitement and evaluate even more scores. Why? Because I love doing it. Uh, so can can anybody be too happy about something? I guess we're going to find out. So thank you so much, Leon, and I will see you guys in the next evaluation. <laughs>